Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for inviting me here today to uh, do an update on, um, uh, basically I'm just going to talk for a few minutes about the work Alike Friendly, and then give you an update on the Accord and where we are in the Accord process. Um, oh, I've got the controls, sorry, I forgot. So uh, many of you are probably aware the Lake Friendly Initiative is an initiative of the South Basin Mayors and Reeves. And um, about uh, uh, back in 2009, they got together and they realized that there was some serious issues facing their community around deteriorating water quality. And they really felt it was necessary for a local government approach, a grassroots response to this issue. And really they wanted to see some uh, cooperation around uh, work to be done in the Lake Winnipeg watershed. And as Norm mentioned, the Lake Winnipeg watershed is huge. It's about a million square kilometers. And it's fed by many diverse sources. So we've got uh, many rivers and a lot of uh, water that comes is directly related to what happens on the land in the Lake Winnipeg watershed. So the Lake Friendly Initiative is really about effective communication and collaboration. Um, really what we're trying to do is use the levers for social change to affect positive change and to really look at our communications and build awareness around the deteriorating water quality, uh, to look at understanding that water is our most valuable resource, to provide a focused, clear and consistent approach to messaging and communications, and really to bring the point home that we're all part of the solution and we're all part of the problem to deteriorating water quality. What are these levers? Well, layered communication, legislation, political influence, infrastructure, market forces, and trends. And these are all of the levers um, around effective social change and really beginning to, to put um, communication strategies and programs in place that will begin to start that change, the change that we all require. What we, really, what we believe at Lake Friendly is um, working across jurisdictions and building awareness is going to increase the platform for success. It's going to increase the um, support, the legislative support that we need, the process support we need, and also the funding support we need as well. And we really believe that clearly articulating the problem is a really important uh, part of communicating to the public. Articulating what we're seeing and what's causing the problem, and as Norm mentioned, the, this is a uh, satellite picture of Lake Winnipeg that many of you are very familiar with. And that building an understanding that this is in Canada and across the world, this is not unique. And then really defining the impacts, the impacts on our economy, the impacts on our way of life, the impacts on things that we take for granted, like going to the lake on May long weekend, all these things. So Lake Friendly outlines the contributing factors, which are almost every human activity, and the contributing factors in the Red River Basin, which are, which are a very important focus, as Norm mentioned about the percentage of nutrients that are coming up the Red River. <coughs> So we believe we need a non-point source approach towards social change and towards really finding solutions to uh, the, price, the problems around Lake Winnipeg. And these are, um, this approach is going to have to be focused and clear and consistent messaging, and it's going to have to include all sectors and across jurisdictions. So Lake Friendly over the past few years has worked on a program called the Do What Matters, which is um, practices and actions for um, every sector, from municipalities to schools, to farms and really um, outlining some of the ideas and we're currently in the process of working on an actual marking system that will begin to evaluate the nutrient reduction strategies for different sectors and we're actually working on the municipal one right now and I see Donna Dagg who's, uh, who's spearheading that process for us in, in, in the group. Thank you, Donna. Um, some of the, these are just a quick peek of the do what matters and this is for in your home, your cottage, your school, your business, your municipality, your farm. And really what we did is we linked best practice to water across all sectors. And we really tried to get that public information out there. Um, we also worked on over the last few years in a really collaborative manner with h 2 iq and I have copies of this if anyone would like a, a copy. And this is basically uh, over 20 organizations got together to work on this project, which clearly def it's, it's geared for educators, both formal and informal educators, and it's kind of like the Coles notes of what's happening and, and where you can get your information around Lake Winnipeg and the processes that are happening. It's a crowdsource, it's been vetted, and it's been really contributed to by many organizations. Um, most of our work is really around personal decisions and collective actions equal change. That's been our focus. And now getting to the Accord, um, building on the success of the Lake Friendly Initiative and our partnership with the provincial government, um, Lake Friendly is a key um, a member of the uh, Lake Friendly Accord and Alliance. 
And uh, many of you will recall the Minister of Conservation and Water Stewardship, uh, Minister McIntosh, announced the Lake Friendly Accord in June of 2013. Well, what is the Accord? Well, the Accord is a policy, a, a policy document at, for coordinated and engaged action. Um, it's a provincial partnership initi initiative to coordinate action towards a common goal of improving water quality. And I'm sure many of you have seen a, a copy of it here. And the objectives of the Lake Friendly Court are to reduce nutrients to waterways, reduce the frequency and severity of algal blooms in waterways, to improve aquatic ecosystem health, enhance environmental, community, and economic benefits for water, and, from water, sorry, and enhance collaboration between those working to reduce nutrient loading in waterways. So it's really about um, collaboration and about nutrient, nutrient reduction strategies. So here's where we are. We've got a, a bit of a, a structure kind of in place to start to um, go through some of the, uh, the actions and some of the, uh, the uh, steps they're going to have to, to go going forward. Um, what I thought I would do is just kind of break it down for you. I tried to simplify it uh, so you could see where the accord is and, and where we are in the process. Um, the Lake Friendly Stewards Alliance is a, a large group that was put in to support the objectives of the Lake Friendly Accord. The Lake Friendly Stewards Alliance was established, and it's chaired by Minister Gord McIntosh and Eric Gamble. Um, the membership for the Stewards Alliance includes, and you can see all of the different organizations, uh, both governmental, non-governmental organizations, um, ENGOs, cottage associations, and really the, the, or, the organizations are gathered together as a way to share information and kind of get that broad sector support. The objectives of the Stewards Alliance are to facilitate information sharing across sectors, to enhance collaboration and coordination, to receive updates from the steering committee, to participate as members of working groups if, they, if they'd like to, and to reinforce the role of the steering committee and working groups in planning for and achieving the objectives of the accord. Um, this, the large alliance group will meet once or twice per year. The Lake Friendly uh, Steering Committee is oversees and coordinates the activities of the Lake Friendly Stewards Alliance. The, stewards, the Lake Friendly Stewards Alliance is comprised of um, the members of all of the working groups, a chair, uh, two co-chairs, um, Bruce Gray, the Deputy Minister, and myself are um, helping to co-chair that. Um, Bob Samford is the uh, an ambassador, and we also have Hank Venema, Nicole Armstrong, and Les Rutherford, who are uh, special advisors and um, represent the, uh, sit on the steering committee. The steering committee will be meeting about six times per year. And what are the objectives of the steering committee? Well, the steering committee, um, with the input of the working groups, the objectives of the steering committee are to develop a vision and roadmap for implementing the Lake Friendly Accord, to review, identify, and overcome the barriers for change, to ap approve annexes to the document, to implement, implement the working group's recommendations into actionable items, to review strategies for implementation, to make recommendations for the development of policy and legislation, the working groups are tasked with evaluating current best practices for, for specific. Oh, sorry, I think I missed. A, oh. uh, the working groups are tasked with evaluating current best practices for specific sectors, including um, the the work of the steering committee is informed by the different working groups, and the various working groups uh, take on a, a six different areas, which is rural landscape, urban landscapes, science, research, and traditional knowledge innovation, economic development and technology, governance, and uh, communication and education. The working groups will be, their work will be determined by um, the chairs on how frequently they'll be meeting. The objectives of the working groups are to be uh, the feet on the ground, uh, to be out there gathering information and bringing back what's happening, what are the barriers to change, what has to happen in order for us to move forward in the process. They're going to provide input to the annexes of the court. Um, they'll identify the gaps, barriers, and challenges, and then the steering committee will have the op will have the um, the task of removing barriers, getting doing um, visioning, and, and those types of jobs. So the working group is really going to be bringing that knowledge, that sector specific, back to the group, so we get a good handle on what's happening across the watershed through all sectors. Well, how does this all play out? Well, the steering committee will work work towards meeting the key objectives of the core document by creating and fostering a common vision and roadmap for the Lake Winnipeg watershed in Lake Winnipeg, identify and implement paths for best management practices through consultation with those in the field. They will work to ensure that policy and legislative processes reflect implementation, paths, and objectives. They will work towards a coordinated process for sharing of information across all sectors and jurisdictions. 
They will identify opportunities for partnership, increase, in, increase for efficiency and technology transfer, and introduce new and innovative technologies. They will enhance stewardship and encourage economic opportunities. They will establish a governance model to help coordinate efforts, and they will create an efficient process to reflect the necessity, necessity for immediate action. Well, those are the next steps for the, those are the Lake Friendly Accord kind of in a nutshell, and, and Lake Friendly will, will continue to work with the Accord and continue to work with our partners, and, on, and our next steps are going to be, uh, we're launching a campaign this summer that we hope is going to be an information campaign that we've been working on for a couple of years called Become an Activist, and Aquavist, and it's a uh, public communication and engagement strategy, and I just thought I'd throw this up here so you can see what we're working on next, and we're really excited about this. It's going to be um, kind of based on the uh, principles of social marketing. Um, it's going to be informed by best science and, and content that's vetted, and it's going to be, hope, we're hoping that it's going to be a project that all of our partners can participate in and use. And so we're going to be engaging the public and encourage collective action. And we're hoping to, uh, you might, hoping you're going to see these signs this summer. We're still working on it, but we're really hoping to start engaging the public in, in this process. And we really think that engaging the public is our greatest challenge, but it's also our greatest opportunity to see meaningful change. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.